everyone. So, welcome back no, from your uh, academic break. <laughs> so, we will continue our discussions on our applied economics. Uh, this is now the uh, continuation no, with the demand concepts. Now, let's discuss naman yung other side of the demand and supply uh, curve. This is now the supply concepts on the side of the producers. So, let us define what is supply first. Now, this refers to the behavior of suppliers ayan, or producers on their willingness and ability to make products available at given price. Okay, so it will now come from the producer sides. The amount of supply of a specific product that they can produce for the demand side. So we have the quantity supplies or the QS pertains to the amount of goods and services suppliers are able to make available at given price. Now, same with uh, demand that and there is also a schedule. So, alis lang muna ako sa frame. Uh, sc uh, supply schedule refers to the tabular presentation of prices and their corresponding quantities supplied on the side of the suppliers. And if we will try to draw again the line, we will call this as the supply curve. Okay, It is the representation of the uh, effect of the price and the quantity supplied on the part of the producers. Okay, so it is an upward curve from left to right. So it means that it is a positive slope. Okay, ayan. So, so let's try to explain what is the law of supply. Sabi dito, when prices of commodities tend to increase, the quantity supplied also increases. No? Siyempre, we are talking about on the part of the producers. Now, I guess you have already experienced the nitong law of supply, no? especially when you are selling. And I'm sure some of you here are online entrepreneurs, tama ba? If your product has increased in price, ayan, kasi ng, uh, pumatok siya sa market, ayan, so you have increased the price. Usually, ang ginagawa ng supplier, di ba, they increase yung units na they are selling. And that is the law of supplies. Supply, I mean. So if the price increases, also, the quantity being produced by the suppliers will also increase. So let us try to look sa graph, no? yung representation of the law of supply. Ayan, as you can see here, as the price goes up, ayan, dito sa price, supply also goes up. Ayan. So if you will see here, naging $50 na yung kanyang product, tendency is the producers will also increase the items. Naging 5,000 units na siya. This is now the law of supply on the side of the supplier. But of course, there are also yung tinatawag natin na non-price determinants. So aside from price, what are the other factors that affect yung increase of supply? Okay? So, ayan. We have six. No? We have competition, technology, cost of inputs, uh, producers' expectation of future prices. We have the legal provisions. And of course, other factors such as Natural phenomenon. Okay, so we will discuss them one by one. Starting with competition. Ayan. So I have two scenarios here. Okay, so we will answer no, what would be the impact to supply. Will it increase? Will it decrease? So ang first natin na non-price determinant is of course the competition. Uh, siguro sa inyong barangay or sa dyan, somewhere in your area, napapansin nyo to, di ba yung sari-sari store. Pag may nagtayo ng sari-sari store, yung kapitbahay magtatayo rin ng kanyang sari-sari store. And kung napansin nyo sa isang road may usually apat or lima na sari-sari store who is selling the exact same goods. Tama ba? And this is something that is happening then sa supply side. There would always be competition. And what will happen now to the number of uh, products being produced dun sa supply side? Of course, as a general, yan, if we will... Uh, ano natin to? As a general, yung buong market or the buong industry, more producers means more products. Tama ba? So the supply will go up. Again, uh, if that if we will see the whole industry. But as an individual producer or an individual business, anong mangyayari? Siyempre, ikaw na ang daming competitors, there are a lot of competitors who is producing the same type of product, would you increase your production? Diba? Kasi tendency is kung napakadami na available na items in the market, there's no need for you to increase kasi baka hindi rin mo yan mabenta. So you are now decreasing diba, your supply. So I will type here, decreased supply. 
this is on the part of the individual producer. Okay? Ayan. Pero what if, ito, dito tayo sa second. Again, a point of view of an individual producer. Let's say, marami tayong competitors na nag-close. Ayan. So, tendency is, we are the only one, di ba, who is producing that type of product for the market. So, kung konti lang ang competition natin, we tend to increase our production. So, increased supply tayo dito. Again, this is on the individual perspective of a producer. Okay? So, competition really drives no, yung ating mga producers or entrepreneurs on uh, in knowing on how, how much should they produce their supply their product. You know. And I guess most of you, you lalo na yung mga online seller friends natin dyan, napapansin nyo yan, di ba? For example, I have a product, let's say, yung clothes, yung ating online, on, online, online ukay-ukay. In the, in some cases, di ba, ang dami na rin nag-online uh, selling. Same products, clothes, shoes. Di ba? To the point na sa sobrang dami na nagtitinda, we cannot sell our products anymore. And if we cannot sell our products anymore, linilimit na rin natin yung kinukuha natin na products from our suppliers kasi hindi natin mabenta yan. Dami nagbebenta. Ito yung competition. It's a non-price determinant of how much supply should we provide to the market. Okay? Alright, so next one na non-price determinant, ito, technology. Ayan. So we have two scenarios dito, better or advanced technology using the production process or yung ating conservative or aging technology or obsolete technology used in the production process. Okay, so what would be now the impact to supply? Alright? Of course, for the first one, itong picture na to, if our production process is highly industrialized, we can produce more goods na more efficient at mas cost-effective at the same time, shorter time of production. Mas marami tayo na po produce. Okay? So, there would be now an increase in supply. Okay? And, of course, doon naman sa isa, if you are going to use yung traditional method of doing things, di ba? we are going to employ yung human. Human cannot be compared to a machine. So, human still takes time. Lalo na pag tao, kailangan niyan magpahinga. So, we can he or she cannot work 24-7. So, when it comes to production of the supply, mas konti ang mapuproduce niya. So, there should be a decrease in supply. Okay? But nowadays, because of highly uh, high level of industri industrialization around the world, more and more producers are uh, uh, adopting yung technology when they produce goods. Again, it, much, it is much, much faster, much cheaper, at mas maraming produce at the shortest time possible. At ito yung tinatawag nating economies of scale. Okay? More can be produced at a lesser cost. Okay? Ang isang disadvantage naman nito, of course, sabi nila, syempre, if you will try to integrate technology in all the work, even in the production process, nawawala na yung human touch. Kasi there are some items rin na kailangan ng human touch. Okay? But I guess you understand now no, on how technology affects yung number of units to be supplied or the effect on it, on the supply as a whole. Okay? Ayan. So that is technology. Another non-price determinant of supply is, of course, the cost of inputs when we are producing goods. Siyempre, ayan, two scenarios again, higher cost of inputs and lower cost. Doon sa higher cost, pag mas mahal yung ating raw materials, o sino ba dito yung, oops, I'm very sorry, nalaglag. Sino ba dito yung ano, mahilig dito mag-bake? Ayan, or uh, gumagawa ng food products. No? Siyempre, for HM, some of you siguro meron yung mga online bakeries. Ayan. Ano nangyayari? Let's say your product is cupcake. Uh, yung ating ingredients is nagmahal. Diba? Once na nagmahal na yung ating ingredients, we can only produce diba, little. Kasi we have a budget. Let's say ang budget natin isang libo. Ingredients natin, yung flour, yung egg, etc. Lahat tumaas. Our production or our units to be produced will decrease. Ayan. So, lagay natin dito, decreased supply. Okay. But in the case, doon yung example ko kanina, yung ating cupcake, nagmura lahat. Yung cupcake, ay yung cupcake, yung flour, yung egg, etc. and other ingredients, lower cost, we have the 1,000 budget, mas marami ang ating mapuproduce. So, there would be an increase in supply. Oops, wrong spelling, sir. Okay. Increase in supply. So, this is how the cost of input 
affects yung ating supply. Okay? Pero, syempre, in the Philippine setting or the uh, whole world, yan, as a whole, inflation will always happen. So, we will expect that all prices of commodities will continue to increase in the foreseeable future. Ayan. Lalo na ngayon, no? especially for us na all this na. Dati, 1,000 pesos, madami ka nang mabibili sa grocery niya. Punong-puno yung basket mo. But now, with your 1,000 pesos, yung isang basket na lang na maliit ang napupuno. Again, inflation affects everything, even in the cost of inputs. So another non-price determinant is what if we are expecting a, in, an increase in price in the future? Ayan. For example, ito pa lang, itong commodity na to, yung oil, yung crude oil natin, whole world, once the crude oil affects, uh, increases in price, it affects all products around the world. No? Ayan. So what would be now the impact to supply? Let's say dito, uh, if there is a, uh, wait, let me just change this. There is a uh, favorable or expected, expected increase in price. At dito naman is expected decrease in price. Okay. So let's see what, is, what would be the impact. Ayan. Uh, we are expecting a change in price in the future. So what would be the impact to the supply today? Okay. If we will expect na magtataas, let's say, yung raw materials, yung price ng raw materials in the future, tendencies are, anong ginagawa ng business ngayon? They would buy yung price today kasi it's much cheaper as compared to the increase in the future. So today, the supply will increase. Yeah. Alright? But if we will expect, as ano to, ah, on the point of view of the supplier, if we will expect that there will be a decrease in price of the raw materials in the future, tendency is we will not produce now. We will wait, diba? We will wait until the price of the raw materials will decrease in the future. So now, ano mangyayari sa supply now? Supply will decrease. Again, dahil, yung mga suppliers will only produce once those prices will go down, yung raw materials. Okay? That is now the producer's expectation of future price. What else? How about the legal provisions naman? Ito, legal provisions, these are the rules or laws being set by the government no? that will affect the supply. For example, ito, we have two scenarios here, favorable and unfavorable. Let's say we have these two commodities. No? I am sure you have heard yung excise tax natin or the sin tax when it comes to yung mga bisyo. Which means that mas mataas yung binigay na tax ni government sa mga alcoholic beverages and of course yung cigarette. No? Cigarette I think ngayon is 5 pesos per stick. As compared doon na piso lang. No? By the way, I don't smoke so I don't know the price. Ayan. And just in case na ikaw yung company or a business who produce these ano, uh, uh, products what will happen? Mas mahal na yung product mo, would you produce and produce and produce if your target market has no capacity to buy? Kasi di ba medyo mahal yung price. So, ano mangyayari dito? Supply will decrease. Ayan. Ay, dito pala siya sa second kasi unfavorable siya. Supply will decrease. Ayan. Same din dito sa basic necessities, no? the impact of train law. Uh, siguro hindi nyo maramdaman yung train law kasi you are students. Pero I'm sure your parents has, uh, have been already experiences the effect of train law kasi uh, the train law is uh, imposing more tax no, sa mga basic necessities which means the price will go up. No? On the part ano naman, again, uh, on the part of the supplier, syempre kung tumahas ang tax, supply will decrease. Okay? Pero what if we have a provision or law that decreases the prices no syempre supply naman will increase yan for example they have decided to remove yung excise tax nito nitong cigarette so from 5 pesos babalik siya sa piso of course kung piso yan mas marami na naman ang gustong mag sigarilyo kasi it's more affordable all right yan yung legal provisions natin so what else we have other non price determinants ito i guess we can say na uh, we have been observing no, this uh, type of problem no? even long before. Kasi ang Philippines is laging tinatamaan ng natural disasters, sabi nga nila. 
from earthquake to typhoons. Ayan. So, natural phenomenon, another non-price determinant. Ayan. So, favorable natural phenomenon. In the case lang na uh, biglang gumanda yung panahon, ayan, very, ano siya, for example, sa farmland, di ba, pag maganda ang panahon, mas madami ang pwedeng maani. So, kung favorable lang natural phenomenon, walang masyadong bagyo, favorable weather conditions, supply will increase. Ayan. But for unfavorable natural phenomenon, tulad nung nakaraan, di ba, binagyo tayo, kawawa yung mga farmlands, kasi yung months nilang tinatanim na mga vegetables, in two days, binura lahat nung bagyo. Or other cases, in other places in the Philippines, yung El Nino. Tama ba yan? El Nino, yung drought. Di ba, tagtuyot, nasisira yung mga panamit. Or we have yung mga typhoon, uh, typhoons, earthquakes, ayan, or mga tsunami, it all affects yung supply. So, kung meron tayong ganito, yung unfavorable natural phenomenon, supply will decrease. Okay? Hopefully, if there is only a way, di ba, to avoid these natural causes, but then again, it happens naturally. So, we cannot do anything about it. No? Again, supply will be affected. And lastly, again, the last non-price determinant na didiscuss natin for today is the Profitability of alternative goods that may be produced. Nowadays, every product has an alternative good. No, there's always a substitute. No, ito pa nga lang, oh, McDonald's, pwede niyang substitute is Burger King. Sa sakyan, pwede niyang substitute is through commute, through jeeps, or uh, ito, LRT. A cake, pwede niyang substitute is donut. Pepsi, substitute is cola. Yung tea, substitute niya is coffee. All goods now have substitute goods. At what if that substitute good performs better as compared to yung original good? Ayan o, higher profitability in alternative goods. Let's say dito tayo si McDonald's, alternative goods si Burger King. Kung mas mataas ang sales ni Burger King, nandun ang demand, syempre, would we increase our supply kung wala namang bumibili? So, supply, our supply, on the point of view of the supplier is, will decrease. Ayan, decrease. But, in the case that our competitor or yung alternative good to our product, medyo mahina ang profitable nila, syempre, the demand will go to us. So, it's our opportunity now to increase our supply. Supply will increase. Ayan. So, those are the non-price determinants. No? And I guess by now, you have understood what is the concept of supply. So, thank you for... Uh, listening for this short discussion. Eh? Again, may medyo mahaba yung ating break, but I would like to remind everyone no, yung ating requirement na after watching this video, you have to comment your name in the comment section for the attendance. Thank you very much, and I will see you on our next discussion. Thank you.